And the thing about decisions that we talked about last week and we're going to talk about even more this week is it doesn't just affect you. It affects those around you. Even those personal decisions that you feel you only make for yourself, they still can affect those people who are around you. Go to Proverbs 29. We're going to start in Proverbs 29. 29 and 2. It says, when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. So why is that? Well, when the righteous thrive, they know that the decisions that the righteous make is going to affect them in a positive light. However, when the wicked rule, the decisions will not be good and they groan, right? Go to verse 7, 29 and 7. It says, the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. Again, talking about how it affects other people, your decisions. And you say, well, I'm not a ruler, not a leader per se, but you are. You are. So the thing is, we always have to remember our decisions impact other people. One of the most important factors of decision making is remembering that it is going to affect, that is going to have some type of impact on others. And the choices that we make affect others every single time. And we have to realize that. And when you realize that, you tend to change on how you make decisions. People are going to be in your life regardless of if you want them to or not. The world is a part of your life whether you want it there or not. You can say, oh, I don't want my decision to impact nobody around me. I'm, I'm my own person. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not a role model. I'm not this. People are going, no matter where God takes you, no matter where he leads you, no matter where he guides you, no matter where he places you, you can be guaranteed there are going to be people there. It's going to be people in your life. You may not know them. You may not have the best relationship with them, but they're going to be there. And they're going to be impacted by you, and you are going to be impacted by them. And we have to put ourselves up in such a way that we can be structured to listen to God, to be influenced by God, to be driven by God so that we can be successful not only in our life, but influence success in the lives of others. It just has to be done. Go to 29 verse 12. It says, if a ruler listens to lies, all his officials become wicked. If a ruler listens to lies, all his officials become wicked. Wow. So anytime that you have a person who is in a place to influence and they don't have good influences, what happens? Everybody starts to fail. Many of you are leaders. You're either leaders at work, at home, in your family, in other situations, all types of things can happen that can cause you to be a leader. Sometimes you can just fall into being a leader. Y'all sound funny. I, I, I sound okay coming through the mic? Okay, okay, I hear some feedback up here. But that's okay, I can deal with it. All right, so when you are a leader, when you have influence on people, when you are directing and touching the lives of others, you have to be careful as to what is coming into your life. Because what is coming into your life is having an impact on going out into other people's lives, right? So as you are this leader, and as you realize that you're trying to influence either your kids, your family, you're learning more information, you want to share this information with other people, you want to do things that can help other people, but you have to step back and say, well, what's influencing me? What's touching my life? How am I getting fed? How am I getting healthy? How am I being strengthened? Because I can only give so much. But if I'm receiving negative, guess what I'm going to push out? Negative. So what do we have to look at? You have to look at your team. Everybody in here has a team. Whether you want that team or not, you have people in your life who influence you, who help you, who direct you, whether you want to or not. 
That is the key. You can always think that I'm the leader of this team. I'm helping all of them. Hang around them long enough. You talk like them. You act like them. And you start to make decisions like them. Even if you got people on your team who like to fight. I want y'all to think about this. You not a fighter, right? You say, ain't no fighter. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Ain't that the same, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, but you got people on your team who are fighters. Right. Just like that. Now, even though you're not a fighter, you get into a situation that may not even escalate in the fight. But what you do? You don't fight. You go get your team. Oh, I know somebody who's going to fight. And you go, you got the mindset of fighting. You may not be the one doing it, but your actions are going to reflect more of what they do. You still become angry quicker. You still fly off the handle quicker, just like them. So you may not go to the extreme like they do, but you're still influenced by them. So if you ever want to know who you are, don't just look in the mirror. Look at your team. Look at who calls you the most. Look at who's in your ear the most. Look at who's around you the most. They're going to influence you. You're going to become alike in some ways. You ever known somebody to be single and get married? Don't they start to act alike? You know, they start to blend a little bit. Now, she may be nice, he may be mean, or vice versa. And she still can be nice. But at the same time, you're going to see little tweaks, little changes, little influences. They're around each other all the time. It's hard for them not to be. Dress different, talk different, act different, make decisions differently. So we always have to know that who's around us, whose advice we listen to, who we allow to impart into our lives is going to affect us. Psalms 1. Let's go to Psalms 1. Y'all know this scripture, I know. But it's such a good scripture. It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But those but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like the chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. So we must be influenced by godly people. We can't allow ungodly people to influence us. Now, you say, well, I want to have an impact on the world. You will. But you also have to be careful on who's impacting you. Because the more that you're around trying to help others, and the more you are in their company, the more that you are listening to their problems, but also the more that they are talking about yours, and you open up more and more to them. If y'all ever notice when you go to a, uh, you've seen the shows anyway, if you haven't gone to therapy, but you go and you see the psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever, they have kind of a, a line in the sand to where they talk about this person. But you ever notice the person when they want to turn it into a conversation and ask about the psychiatrist, they don't really say much about themselves. They say a little bit just to kind of get the conversation going, you know, where I'm from, very general. But they don't go deep. Why not? Because when we start having conversations about my problems, your problems, my life, your life, you're going to start to influence the things we talk about. Because if I'm talking to you about my kids, you're going to tell me about your kids. Oh, I do this. And I'm going to be like, I never thought about it that way. I might try that. And that's how we share. That's just the natural way of sharing information. But that's just general stuff. But when we start to go deeper and you start to build a friendship with people, you have to be careful on what you share and what you allow them into because they are going to influence whatever you share. It's just that's the way relationships work. That's how friendships work. We don't just talk about one person. You talk about yourself. And they comment on things that you're going through. 
and you listen to the comments. You'll talk about your marriage, and they'll say, oh, in my marriage, I don't do that. And you're like, oh, you might want to try that. And now you try that, and your husband says, I don't like that, and he leaves. Uh-oh. -huh. <laughs> Didn't work, right? <laughs> so you have to be careful on who you are letting into your life. But you also have to make sure that when you influence people's life, you take a godly approach. Because God has entrusted you with something. He's entrusted you with the gospel. And if you are not honoring him and you are leading people down a negative path, you have a big price to pay. Don't believe me. Okay, let's go to Matthew. Matthew 18 and 6. Matthew 18 and 6. If anyone causes one of these little ones, and this is Jesus talking, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Wow. This is Jesus talking. So he's giving you responsibility not to steer people wrong, not to influence them negatively. People, you are either going to affect people in a positive light, or you're going to infect people. When you infect someone, it's like a virus. You can really poison their life. People can really poison yours. Look around. Look at all the people who you've gone through life and you consider friends. Some family. And they burn you. They hurt you for no reason. You share information, and they gobble that information up, and they spew it out in a negative sense. You ever had information come back to you and be like, who told you all that? I, I didn't even say that. I didn't even say it that way. Or they can take your words and then make them sound bad. And even like I said it, but I sure didn't say it like that. Make it sound like you was talking about somebody. Make it sound like you dis disrespected somebody. And you didn't. People lie on you. People hurt you. People can come against you. They can act like they want you to succeed only to cheer when you fail. Oh, no. And you sitting here saying, I thought you was happy for me. Mm -hmm. I told you not to do it. I knew it was going to mess up. I knew you shouldn't have did that. You didn't say anything. They just sitting back watching you. Yeah. See, what you got to realize is, is, is don't be mad at them. Don't be hateful towards them. Put borders in your life to limit their reach, but don't be mad. See, what you gotta realize is some people's life is so dark, it's so hopeless, it's so ugly, they can't see anything more but darkness. And they wanna see light so bad that they will set you on fire just to get a little bit of light. Now, when you think about that, that that's their brightness, it don't last but a little while, but they cheer when you are burning. They cheer when they see something because that takes the attention off of them and they can watch somebody else take a step down. They can watch somebody else be negatively influenced. They cannot have this on their heart, on their shoulders. They can share in the light and say, oh, look, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Mm. You have people who want to share news so bad, bad news. They get mad when you know already. Your phone ever rings. Oh, you know such and such done died. Yeah, I heard. Oh, oh okay, somebody already told you. Okay, well, I'll call you later. That is. Oh, okay, well, Jack, they can be the one, the first one to tell you what was going on. That's it. <laughs> so sad. I done had people call me and told me somebody died, and I called the house, and they answered the phone. I said, you ain't dead. And I was sick. <laughs> said you were dead. No. Uh, uh, they thought they said I could have died. Like, oh, dog, they were trying to jump the gun. I guess they figured by the time I called, maybe they been gone. I don't understand that one. Never did. But it's folks like that. Y'all know them. And if you put these people in your life, if they're negative to other people, what make you think they're going to be positive to you? If they call you to talk about somebody else, why you think they ain't calling somebody else to talk about you? If they cheating on that person with you, what make you think they ain't going to cheat on you with somebody else? A person's nature is a person's nature. If they gossip, 
One thing I know about somebody who gossip, they gossip about everything. Everything, everything. Nothing is off limits, including you. They will have, you will have people gossip about you to you because they don't forget who they were talking to. And you sitting there like, hold on, that, you talking about me? Oh, no, 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 uh, 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 no. <laughs> Folks who talk, talk. So you can't think that you got, you so special, that you so great that, and they'll tell you, oh, you know, I don't talk about you like this. You know, I don't look at you like this because you, you different. You this, you that. Yeah, that's just to bring your guard down so you can talk a little bit more. And the more you share, as soon as you hang up, you ever notice when you tell something juicy to somebody, they get off the phone a little quicker? Why? So they can die. call them right back and watch them click over. Because they, they can't wait to tell your business. You got to be careful with these people. Folks ready to talk about you. They ready to make you fall if you let them. You are the guard for yourself. The more you share, the more you give people, the more they can use against you if you allow them. So be careful with the information, but also be careful with your soul. Because all that influence that you're allowing in, see, a lot of times we think about this wicked counsel. We say, oh, well, they ain't going to nobody who don't know what they're talking about. They ain't going up no thief and asking them. Wicked counsel mean people who you don't want to be like, you allow them to advise you in your actions, in the things that you want to do. That's wicked counsel because that's negative. The only thing that people do, and we are victims of it too, but we learn it. We all want to make people like us, right? So if somebody, if you're talking to somebody and you don't want to be like them, why would you ask their advice? Because that's what I do. Right? That's human nature. Because if you ask me, if you say, oh, I'm going through this, I'm having this problem, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, what's my first response? If it was me, if I was in that situation, or I give you an example, say, you know what, that happened to me, and I did. So I'm always putting myself in your situation. So the thing is, I must want you to be like me. I didn't say God. I didn't say go to God. I didn't say pray to God. I didn't say see what God wants you to do. I said what I would do if I were you, which means you should do what I would do in your life. So I'm going to keep imparting myself into your life to make you reflect me. But if you look at my life and say, I don't want to be like that, well, then you better not ask that person what to do because they're going to tell you what they would do. And then you're going to end up being like them. And now when everybody see you, they're going to be like, oh, that's them too. Just the light. I ain't like them. Yes, you are. We have to be careful. The impact that we have. Now, here's the other thing. Last point. When we're impacting people, we're not trying to change people. We're not trying to uh, um, fix people. We're not trying to better people in that sense. We want God to better them. We want to influence people now there's the difference influence versus fix when you influence somebody you show them the path so they can figure it out All right. now have you ever seen a teacher when a kid had a problem and he said miss such and such i don't know the answer to this and she said oh and then she just take the paper and that go the answer and leave what did he learn Nothing. But he got the answer right. That's what we want to do. We want to fix people. We have to allow people to fix themselves. But we got to get them the tools that's needed. And there's only one tool in the toolbox that they need. God. So we have to point them in the right direction. Because the thing is, and I want you to remember this, God makes people. People make issues. People aren't issues. They're not projects either. People are people. So God makes people. People make issues. People aren't issues. Neither are they projects. People are what? People. They're just like you. They're going to have problems and they're going to have more problems. 
but we want to make sure they know where to go. But we can influence them in a way that they can feel they always have the answer, just like you know you always have the answer to the hard problems and to the easy ones. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5, we're going to read 17 through 20. Y'all know this very well too. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. And what is this new creation? All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of what? Reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So we're Christ ambassadors, right? We are the ones who can influence and represent Christ here on earth. How do we represent him? Through love, through giving, through giving of our time, through giving of our energy, through being a positive influence on others, through the decisions that we make in our life, that others are impacted by it, knowing that God is impacting us. So when you make your decisions, You can make them in a way to know that God is there for you and you are there for other people and that you can be sure that God is influencing you and that is his light and how it can influence other people. See, when you make decisions and you realize that your decisions impact others and not just you, you tend to avoid unnecessary mistakes. When you are by yourself and you're single, you do whatever you want. And you know stuff may not go well, but you do it anyway. And all of a sudden, when you get this little baby in your life, and you realize that the stuff I'm doing going to hurt them, don't you tend to make decisions a little bit more thought out? You know, if you got some sense. Some folks don't, but you know what I'm talking about. You start to change how you live. You start to change how you go places and how you do things because you have somebody depending on you. But it's a whole world depending on you. So you have to make sure that as you go through life, you look around and you see these people that are being influenced and impacted by you. So those little unnecessary mistakes, it ain't saying that you ain't going to make no mistakes. But those little unnecessary mistakes, those little foolish things that you tend to do, that you can't tend to stop, think about who is impacting. Think about who's seeing you. Think about how they're going to be influenced by it and probably go down that same path. Do you want that on you? Is that what we want? Of course not. Because in 1 Corinthians, at first, first Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 4, he says, on the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God, who tests our heart. So you people, you're entrusted with something. You're entrusted with the gospel of God. Now, you can talk it. You can share it. You can write it down. But nothing will do more than you live in it. So if you live the way that God wants you to live, put your life out there the way he wants you to put your life out there. That's your witness. That's how you influence. That's how you impact. And that is how you share the light that God has given you. Amen. 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 Give God a hand. God is good. And all the time. Yes, he is. We thank God for you. We thank God for all that he's doing in your life. And we thank God that he's just, he trusts us to do what he wants us to do. And to live the way he wants us to live. That is very important. Do not ever second guess yourself. Take yourself for granted. Always know that if God can trust you, you must be mighty important. Right? So make sure that you stand on that, knowing that God trusts you to do something. 
and you got a job to do, and that's to live the way that he wants you to live. 